I'll be so, Iron Man. You'll be Hulk. Well, who are you? Tavis. The new superhero called Taboo. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Will's kind of like the uh, Professor X. He saw something in everybody, everybody's qualities, and he says, use it. Use, you're good at this, now amplify it, and let's do this together so we could create the ultimate X-Men. My mom wrote me this amazing letter in 1999. My mom's letter was so, you know, deep on the importance of this bond as if she was connected to a higher power. In, in ways, we all knew it. She's like, well, you are the dream. And Apple is there in the ground to help you make that dream real. And Taboo is that shield, that sword that can help you fight anything. And that is real, how we're, com how we're configured. I'm like, yo, I see it. I was born in East Los Angeles, California. I was brought up by my grandmother. She broke down barriers and walls with the most toughest, roughest people. And that was that native, the Native American spirit just fighting through. If something that reminds me of my grandma, I'll say Red Wolf. Especially now, being really connected to my Native American roots. And it's, it's something that pulls me in. That's why I think it's special to always um, hold on to causes as a, a hero would do. This beat's crazy, this beat's it was a, a very tough times growing up poor in Philippines. My introduction to Marvel was when we had a television in Philippines, you know? And then that's when I, you know, I was introduced to like Captain America, to Incredible Hulk, to Spider-Man. And I remember my mom would always yell at me because because I'll be like this on the on the TV screen. I'll I'll be stuck for hours and hours on uh, during um, during the weekends. I didn't grow up with comic books. I got into comics as a young adult. I'll go to movies, watch those films. Made me want to see. Hey, did you see? No, this they messed the story up. What do you mean they messed the story up? Well, the comic is better. The comic is better. Then I wanted to go. The one guy that spoke to me was Tony Stark. So what makes Tony Stark is not his money. It's his ability to see how to get things done. And he's wearing a suit. I could have my guys make that same helmet. I could build that in a year and a half, working for people to buy. That's how much I got, that's what I got from Tony Stark. I could build an augmented reality helmet that has AI in it, that does exactly that. Our boy hit a situation that we never even thought was reality. He called me on the phone talking about, yo, bro, they just diagnosed me with cancer. What? Are you joking? That's not that a joke. He's like, well, I'm serious. Day one of chemotherapy, I was in the best shape of my life. But I'm fighting for my life. It was like a black space, a black hole, uh, emptiness. I had no hair. I had no eyebrows. I had lost weight. Couldn't pick my kids up. And all that muscle that I had built, and all that like training and, and, and eating right was gone. So Jane Foster, she has a bigger battle that has nothing to do with superhuman strength. It has to do with cancer. It made me think about that. It made me think like, why didn't she just remain Thor the whole time and not go back to doing chemotherapy? Because I know when I was going through chemotherapy, I would have gave anything to not be doing that at the time. But I know I'm going to get through this. The whole thing is fight, 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 fight. If I could help people and be a beacon of motivation to say we're not going to curl up in a ball, we're going to fight this and we're going to beat this, we're going to overcome this. There's nothing in this world that this disease can do to me mentally or physically because I'm going to win. When I lost my first brother, it was a, a very dark, dark time in, in my life. I felt like it was my fault. You know, I was also struggling, and I also had to make something of myself. Now I feel like I'm responsible for for his daughter, you know? Same thing as what Spider-Man did, you know? I guess he wasn't aware of what happened with his uncle, but at the same time, he felt like it was his fault. But to overcome that, he started taking care of his aunt, and that makes him a hero. I remember November the 11th, 2011. 
stepping off the stage and we're like, all right, so I guess we're taking a little break. That six year hiatus shook us to the core where we really believed a lot of us at some point in time that the Black Eyed Peas would never come back together. And so I was like, yo, dude, I'm building this facility. F the past. Like, yo, Tab, dude, you need to come by. It's the new vehicle for us, dude. Trust, man, it's, it's, we're adults now. We don't need the record company. We're gonna build something bigger than any record company. You know, we've done like the biggest tour. We've gone from like underground to like going to like the most popular dance music. Now it's like a blank canvas again, you know? Peas is kind of like the Avengers. We took different journeys that we all had interest in. Along the way, still continuing to be really great friends and, and, and fa a family, supportive. But ultimately, when we come back together, we're able to, you know, do a lot of great things around the world. It's time for the Black Eyed Peas to suit up. <laughs>